welcome to another episode of Film Fetish. As usual, I'm your host CJ, and today I want to talk about something a little different. Periodically on the show, I want to mix things up. Today I want to introduce a segment I like to call Actor Day, where I shall talk about an actor I truly enjoy and respect, and then give you five films that I believe represent them the best. So technically I'll be giving you folks a twofer, since all the films on this list I'll also be recommending. Now 15 years ago I saw a movie in theaters that introduced a character so vile and distasteful I couldn't help but enjoy every second he was on screen. The film I'm talking about is the 2005 film Doom and the actor is of course Richard Brake. Ever since that movie I've been thrilled to see anything Richard has had a role in. Most of which are small roles in film or one to two three episodes in major TV shows. Most people recognize him as the Night King in Game of Thrones. He only had two 30 second scenes in the course of two episodes, before being replaced after a scheduling conflict with another show he was working on at the time. Now he has of late become a Rob Zombie favorite and has gotten a couple of lead roles because of this, one of which will appear on this list, so let's get started. I figured what better movie to start off our list than the incredibly underappreciated 2005 Doom film. From the time I saw it in theaters to the release of the director's cut DVD, I've always loved this movie. It has a ton of character interaction and just enough development to make you believe these marines have worked and lived together for a long while. Now to the man who grabbed my interest immediately. After the brutal opening, we cut to a group of marines about to go on leave. In the center of the room mumbling to himself is Richard Brake's Corporal Dean Portman. When asked what his plans are, he replies he's gonna lock himself in a hotel room with a couple of she-boys. Gold. From that point on, he's constantly the most unlikable human being ever. From trying to strip search every female he passes, to insulting the wheelchair bound technician, and even providing the newest team member drugs. Normally these types of characters are written cold and uninteresting, but Portman is just very energetic and amusing to the point I was kind of upset when he was inevitably killed off. Fun movie, fun role, give it another shot. Next up is one of Brake's earlier films. This is Death Machine. Released in 1994 with heavy cuts, the film is a sci-fi thriller where a major military contracting company is attempting to deal with one of their most eccentric employees, played by the amazing Brad Dorf. One thing leads to another, and Dorf's character unleashes the titular Death Machine, a large, hyper-fast, titanium T-Rex monster. It's a ton of fun, and Richard Brake is front and center as Scott Ridley, the chairman of the board that is hesitant to risk his own neck to confront Dorf. Now Brake's only in the film for 20 minutes or so, but this time is well spent as he proves no matter what he's in he can hold down the role and give a great performance. If you like gory B movies with better than it should be acting and practical effects, give it a go. Next we have Outpost, a 2008 horror film starring Ray Stevenson as a British mercenary leading a team to an abandoned bunker in search of an alleged Nazi super weapon. What they uncover is a device that makes humans unkillable. They also find out that the machine works, as the surrounding woods are swarming with, let's say it, Nazi zombies. Though in this film's defense, they're not really zombies. They don't eat flesh, they just can't die. It's a low-budget attempt at Nazi horror that plays it straight, and for all its faults, is actually pretty good. Richard Brake stars as Pryor, a US Marine that is the right-hand man to Ray Stevenson's character, DC. He's pretty tame in this role, too. Not really going off the rails, even during the film's climax where he inadvertently sets off the final battle. Not too much to really say about his role here, except it's cool to see him play a more subdued character. Check it out, Outpost 2008. Now we head into the incredibly vulgar world of Rob Zombie. As I said at the beginning, Rob Zombie has taken a liking to break and put him in the lead role in his films 31 and 2019's Three From Hell. So why are we not talking about Rob Zombie's newest film? <laughs> Now I thoroughly enjoyed 31. The cast is full of Rob Zombie usuals and they are all pretty great. The main villains are the always incredible Malcolm McDowell as the ringleader of a cult that tortures people for sport, and Richard Brake as Doomhead, the switchblade wielding, clown makeup wearing psychopath that is hired to kill off the contestants. Brake is in full sadist mode and every moment he's on screen is a joy to be had. From him quipping before executing someone with an axe to insulting a prostitute with gross but hysterical dialogue. This is a role not to miss. The last film of the day is one of my personal favorites. I'm of course talking about the 2018 psychedelic revenge film Mandy. The film stars an absolute treasure that is Nicolas Cage as a man who goes on a warpath to take revenge on a cult who murdered his girlfriend in front of him. 
The film is an insane mix of bondage gear, platinum axes, enough LSD to contain the Manson family, and a Nicolas Cage rant that is spectacular. Now Richard Brake has a very small one scene role, but it's one of the best scenes in the film. Richard Brake plays a chemist who creates the drugs for the cult, and an LSD fueled Nick Cage goes to get their location from him. Now in this scene, Cage doesn't say a word, yet a stone break has a full conversation with him, and the scene even features a random tiger. The whole thing's over very quickly, but it's so engrossing you won't notice. If you haven't seen Pascos Comatose's newest bizarre outing, I highly recommend it. Well that's my list, and with that, hopefully I brought forth a new actor for everyone to look up and maybe appreciate a little more. If you have any other actors you feel deserve the spotlight here on the show, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please remember to click that bell and subscribe for future content. This has been Film Fetish. Again, I'm your host, CJ, and remember, keep it lowbrow.